every single person on this planet experiences reality in their own way. And every single person is on a path towards discovering the most authentic and infinite parts of their soul. I am your host, Devon, and you're listening to another episode of Center of the Sun Podcast. Thank you for listening. It may not be apparent all the time, but everyone has a purpose for being on this planet. If you're a living being, you have a purpose. Like, if you're even a toaster, you have a purpose. Like, it's, it doesn't matter at what stage of soul development you're on. I know you can feel those subtle energies swirling all around you when you close your eyes at night. It's like, I know I feel it. This is a force that seems greater than you. But it composes the fibers of your being. And this life force is the key to finding your purpose. So keep on daydreaming about those fantasies in which you somehow managed to be saved from your mental issues. Someone is going to swoop in and save you. Like, oh, a camera crew is going to trick you into doing an intervention of some sort. Like, yeah, this is this is A&E. Every day that 2020 marches on, the truth sets in more and more. Nobody. And when I mean nobody, I mean nobody is going to save you. So it's up to you. But how do you heal yourself when you have such destructive habits? Well, it's why you're addicted to social media and and, and it's why you're scared to be alone. And it stems from your mistrust of your instincts and intuition. Friends keep saying that your issues are all in your head. But then they turn around and manipulate you into never moving a muscle to fix them. Beware. Be aware. Even though you know deep down that they can never have that kind of power over you, there is a small part of you that sees where they're right. And as fall approaches, you'll see a lot more people starting to talk about seasonal depression. And they assume because the seasons change, so will your moods. But nobody, nobody really knows how truly hard it is to do an everyday task, like just be a productive worker or member of society. And that's because you're bothered by unknown forces. And it seems like those unknown forces feed off of your unhappiness. It's so odd. You keep trying to fall in love with yourself. And become a more confident person that people just don't find a reason to mow over. But it's hard, though. When people command that you do what makes you happy. Ascend to 5D. Come on. But what happens if you don't know what that means? You, you definitely you definitely know what exhaustion feels like. And sometimes everything feels like a dream. And because of that, it's hard to get satisfaction from the things you used to love. Because it's more like a nightmare. Now those same pleasures that turned in... That, that were a pleasure, you know, like, that it, it enhanced your life. They started turning into a burden. And generally, you can't really like feel down about about it because everything is fine but you're still struggling with some emotional issues you're not the only one and you're definitely not the only one who gets in these kind of shitty moods and you're not the only one sitting around all day waiting for the sun to go down so you can sit in the you know peace and quiet and the darkness and just think about your existence you often sit and wonder why some people you know, have such intense pain while others get to frolic all day in the motherfucking daisies. From a certain perspective, it may be true that no one is really happy and everyone is just great at hiding their pain. And on the other hand, it could be, could it be equally true that those same happy people just have a greater capacity to heal themselves from within? Well, there's a scientist. Her name is Beverly Rubick. And she wrote several articles in the past few years about the magnetic force, the magnetic forces that uh, can increase the voltage in your cells. The magnetic forces in the environment that can increase the voltage in your cells. And she says, um, when you go to the doctor, they likely, you know, have you laid down. They have you, you know, come in here, come in here, Mr. House. Like, you know, thank you. Like, da da da. 
Uh, let's let's like get your weight. Let's get your temp. You know, uh, what medication are you taking? Like, uh, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then they, you know, do, uh, they probably take some blood or something, but they always do it. Uh, um, they put probes on you to measure your heartbeat, either your pulse or EKG or something. They do something to listen to your heart. And Rubik says doctors are able to see and hear the synchronization between the heart cells and then they can put them on a computer screen. Like, that's what those probes are doing. And not only can scientists and doctors measure the activity between the heart cells, your entire body is also synchronized in a vibrating pattern. So, in 1992, the United States National Institute of Health, they convened a committee to figure out how to describe why humans had a greater sense of those vibrational patterns after things like yoga and meditation and acupuncture. For years, scientists and doctors, I don't really understand why, but they just became really obsessed with chemistry. Like they just kind of abandoned um, all of this like vibrations and like the feelings. And then they just, you know, subscribe to these ideas about breaking down reality into little tiny atoms and molecules and protons. Which is not wrong, but during that same exact time, this new committee in this United States Institute of Health, they called the electricity that flows around the body throughout inside and outside the body, they called it a biofield. So while some scientists were just very um, focused on chemistry and like physics and stuff like that, there is this new form of science or this new area of science called the biofield so rubik said and i'm going to quote a lot in this episode because there's just like a lot of stuff like she there i'm going to talk about her and then another scientist but there is data out here and um rubik said that the quote uh the committee defined biofield as a massless field uh she said it's not necessarily electromagnetic but it surrounds and permeates living bodies and affects the body, end quote. So it's like we have the ability to measure this massless field, but it's not electricity. And she goes on to say that, quote, in science, this, the notion of a vital biological force dates all the way back to the, to the 1600s when matter was believed to involve a life force. So a metaphysical or also known as a metaphysical entity intrinsic to life that renders it alive. So there was a certain point when humans believed this. And then all of a sudden in the modern era, we stopped believing it. So she goes on to say that this force was initially considered immeasurable and outside the scope of science. And I kind of believe it kind of is. Yet discoveries of bioelectricity in plants challenged the notion that this force was immeasurable. By 1850, I think I added the implants part. <laughs> I think I added that part. I forgot to put it in brackets. Sorry, let me add that in here real quick so I don't forget. But she goes on to say by 1850, experimental electrophysiology had replaced the notion of a vital force with electricity. So we used to believe in electrophysiology. Then we t- started talking about electromagnetism. So effectively, um, this notion of the biofield and the, and, the, and the vital force was banned from biological science for a very long time. So there is a reason why you've never heard, you've never heard of this. Um, and that's very intentional. Um, all of this kind of ended like in 1992, like everybody got excited and then they just like stopped. I'm just like, this is cool shit because there's so many implications about this, um, about this new, newish, oldish revisited field of science called the biofield. So um, fast forward. So let's just kind of fast forward to 2020. Scientists can see these forces in this field coming off of people's bodies when they go under certain machines like functional MRI machines. And MRIs are the same as functional MRIs, but functional MRIs just have like a little bit more detail to it. And in addition to the MRIs, they can see how these forces come. 